Hello everyone. Based on the above activity that you've just been asked to do, which was have a look at the standards for practice, which are listed on the Nurses and Midwives Board of Australia, I thought it useful that following you having a look at that um, document is then to take you to an actual cited case where you can see where a particular practitioner has breached the standards for practice. So we're back on the Nurses and Midwives Council of New South Wales website. If uh, you recall, I did say how useful this particular website is in terms of the, the repository of hearings and decisions that it does have and they're a good learning tool because again a lot of the cases we do refer to are actually cited uh, in this uh, website. There are a number of websites you can look at. I think from memory I've told you that the Healthcare Complaints Commission within New South Wales will have a list of hearings and decisions made. I think for, through APRA there's available links. But I encourage you to visit the Nursing and Midwifery Council website because it's a nice website and it's fairly well set out. So let's go and look at a particular case and uh, we will... have a look at uh, a particular case in relation to how a nurse has uh, breached standards for practice. Let's look 2012 and we'll go to this particular case here. So uh, again we're looking at standards for practice, how important they are whenever uh, a nurse, you know, the, the, the benchmark that you must meet is at least operate to the standard. I always say you should exceed that. We all want to be excellent role models. So it's not enough to make, make, meet the, ba the basics, if you like, but go way beyond that. And that's when the, the amalgamation of both your legal framework and your ethical moral framework, when they are working well together that's usually when you'll have those nurses who go way beyond the standard expected and really they're the sort of nurses that you want to come into contact role models and be a mentor and have as your colleagues so unfortunately some of the cases we're looking at now where and look we're not being judgmental it uh, in certain cases we have practitioners who intentionally do the wrong thing but in most cases it's when there's a lack of knowledge or skill or the practice of nursing is uh, falls below that expected and you know it could happen to to anyone I suppose but uh, hopefully not yourself and this is why we stress the importance of these standards and meeting the standards and having a good knowledge base uh, in relation to your practice. So let's look at this particular case which was heard back in 2012 and uh, the way to look at them, remember the citation is the HCCC Healthcare Complaints Commission and the name of the practitioner, 2012, New South Wales Nurses and Midwives Professional Standards Committee. So that usually tells me the Professional Standards Co Committee is usually that lesser uh, panel that sits and hears uh, a nurse that might uh, be guilty or complained about in relation to some aspect of conduct and unsatisfactory professional conduct so usually to do with the knowledge and skills there's something lacking there so it usually gives you the tribunal or the panel who they are and so on the way you look at these fairly quickly the catchwords are always useful so the context is nursing and the charge was unsatisfactory professional conduct as I've said to you it's that lesser of the two in terms of serious where we have as the alternative professional misconduct which is that really really conduct that is well outside the practice of nursing really grievous like sexual theft drug use and so on so what did this nurse if you can look nurse and emerging department of a hospital failure to take appropriate observations and keep appropriate records 
inappropriately advising as to medication and seeing a doctor. So that gives you an area or a snapshot of the areas in relation to clinical practice or professional practice where the standard has been breached, the level has been breached in some way. And when you look through the document, it will really outline uh, in what way and the complaint alleges the nurse was guilty of unsatisfactory professional conduct under the national law and that's section 139b. Remember the national law, protection of the public. So that's the legislative overarching framework that we, we work within. We've also got our professional policies, code of ethics, code of conduct, standards of practice, and it all feeds into protection of the public national law. So what did this practitioner do? Fail to under undertake and complete a thorough and complete nursing assessment of the patient, uh, including taking general observations. Uh, failed to triage the patient inappropriately advise the patient to take Panadol, Panadol and see a doctor in the morning in circumstances where the nurse had not completed a nursing assessment of the patient or triage the patient, failed to create a record of the patient's attendance at the ED of the hospital. So there was a number of contraventions of standards, you know, um, assessment skills, documentation, and also under medication administration. So I'll leave it for you to look through your own time, this in more depth, but just again highlighting standards for practice. How is that measured? Well, they actually will look at the national law, see what it says in relation to standards, and then the evidence that will constitute that standard, will they'll look at the policies in relation to triaging, they'll look at the policy in relation to medication administration and documentation, and then your conduct or the individual who's been complained about, their level of conduct is measured against that. And that's obviously, you know, when something goes wrong and obviously there was a complaint made, the patient in this regard was not happy and made a complaint and that's when it was all closely and carefully scrutinised and the conduct was well below standard. So always have a look at that and again go to the end of the document to see uh, what actually happens or the orders placed on the nurse. Okay, the committee orders, the nurse is reprimanded and for the period of 12 months where the practitioner works and practices as an RN, these are the conditions that are placed on their registration. They mustn't be in charge uh, of any shift, ward or unit and they must be uh, either uh, accompanied by someone else. The practitioner must not work for a nursing agency. The practitioner must advise all current and future nursing hospital employers of any conditions of registration. So if that practitioner was to leave that hospital and work someone else, work in another hospital, they must advise that they've got these conditions placed on them. All right, so this is just a quick little overview. Standards for practice, you know where to find the document in relation to what we should adhere to, and this is it in actual practice, should a practitioner breach those standards. And the types vary depending on the complaint lodged. All right, so thank you.